Today, we're gonna do a full walkthrough of every single branded card and walk through the entire lore card by card using the new Fall of Albaz collection, the White Story. If you wanna see me unbox this, first of all, make sure to check out the video right here and don't forget to watch the entire lore movie that I made if you want, you know, an actual cinematic experience. Let's dive into it. So basically, this is what the cards look like. Um, you can see obviously Japanese, but you can see like, there's sort of like a print texture to the art that you don't really get in the TCG. You don't really get like the look here. So sort of like a texture, but it's just so beautiful. There's the glossy stamp at the bottom. Every card has that. Basically the first card, technically, right? Technically the first card in the set, if you're going by number, first of all, like this pops is just like, whoa, this is, this is incredible. It's really crazy how that looks like. So the first card in the collection is actually the new one, Dogmatic Calamity. Um, set number 000, I believe, but I don't think they include it. Yeah, they don't include it. So this is the first chapter and you can see that these are the numbers you should have in this chapter. So you start off with this chapter one. We're going to put all that later. So we start in the Dogmatica Nation. This is where the, the story starts. The story starts with a, with a girl. So it really starts off with Nadir Servant here. We have the Dogmatica Nexus. And then the High Priest, Maximus. They do also introduce us to the full clan here. We got the Knight, Fleur de Lis. And then we have Theo and Aiden, who are gonna come back later at a later part of the story. And then the story starts basically with the Dogmatica Punishment right here. Starts off with Punishment, where you can see Fleur striking the dragon that fell from the sky. And he is later revealed to be Titanic Lad, the Ash Dragon. And when the smoke clears, there's a boy in the dust. And it is Fallen of Albaz. And this is the other protagonist of the story. You saw this one in the Chronicles animation, where they meet for the first time in Dogmatica Encounter. And uh, then, surprisingly enough, pretty fast, the Tri Brigade move in to claim the boy for themselves. You got the whole tribe here. You got Rugal, you got good old Shreg is gonna be one of the, the late game bosses for the story. You got the sniper, Farajit, and there's obviously gonna be one tribe brigade missing. There's actually two tribe brigade missings from this point of the story. I wonder if you can guess in the chat who they are. Who's not gonna be here? I'm going to be asking a lot of these questions because, you know, we are we enjoy some lore. We got Kiras and Fractal. So the Tri Brigade move in to claim the boy for themselves. Why? I'm not sure, actually. This is the the first encounter of a, of a battle between Dogmatica and the Tri Brigade. Tri Brigade Airborne Assault is the name of this card. And it depicts Shreg and Fleur fighting. Such such cool artwork, by the way. Originally a secret rare. The Ashians, who are the warriors of that Dogmatica nation, are deployed into battle to fight. And we can see here, I believe this is Tri Brigade standoff, if I'm not mistaken. You can see the standoff between the Ashians, the warriors of Dogmatica, and the Tri Brigade. But then, in a twist of faith, the High Priest Maximus starts, basically turns on the, the stigmata, the cross on Ecclesia's forehead, basically turns it on. She, she's in pain, and Albez is like, whoa, what's happening? And this is the first time he's transforming on land into Brigrand, the glory dragon, which, is, which has Ecclesia in the art. He snatches her. This obviously is met with a revolt on the Tri Brigade side, where everybody scrambles to figure out what's going on here and hopefully save Ecclesia from the beast. But the duo escape into the desert 
and they they fly away now this is going to be 25 which is going to be i think the final card in this episode so we'll sleeve that up this is tri brigade rendezvous i want to say correct me if i'm wrong and we meet mercurier here as well for the first time dude imagine being an ozg player getting this collection this is wow wow episode one you open this this has one through 25 in it flip this over you have these you have these and then there should be a new one right here right so it's gonna be two and two has 26 to 50 and this is 26 right we are off to the desert with our with our beautiful couple on one side we have the boy and we have the girl on the other they are stranded in the desert and the spring ends find them now spring ends watch we are in the desert the sea sand of Golgonda. This is where we are right now in the story. And we are introduced to our new set of characters. We have Captain Sargas here. And we have some of the ships. The Exo Bloater something, I think. I don't remember the name. We got Spring Ends Rocky. This is... What's his name? Betor? Befor? I don't remember his name, but the cards look sick. Some more spring ends and Tri Brigade kit finally joins the story. How cool is that? The spring ends capture Albaz and Ecclesia. They put them here in this room. They tie them up, but then Kit comes along and she's like, no, 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 I, I know these guys. Let them go. How does she know? I don't know. Probably Shreg sent off a bird to, to tell her that they're coming to the desert. She releases them and they escape while at the top, the Spring Ends identify something in the sand happening. We have the Spring Ends brothers here. They are a duo. I really want to play the deck. I'm going to I'm going to cook with it a bit, I think, next format. And we are off like Kit has started a, a chase between the Spring Ants and Albaz, who now has to turn into a machine to escape and is turned into Rind um Sprint. Yeah, Sprint the Iron Dash Dragon is born. You can see here the Spring Ants try to they they try to hunt him. They try to fire at him, but they cannot. Yeah, it's finally a sprint hollow, man. The Merrymaker trying to bombard Sprint with no avail. At the end, peace is made in the desert. How do we go from bombarding them to celebrating together? I don't know. Back in the capital, a new saint is being anointed. Can you guess who this saint is? She later plays a pivotal role in the story. And this card is called Dogmatica Genesis. We are crowning a new saint here. And now for the final ritual, the Dogmatic Calamity. Maximus performs the ritual opening up the hole in the sky, unleashing the theater of the Branded. And now the Despians are born out of the Dogmatica people. They are turned. And Fleur de Lis, they try to turn her into a Despia. But she escapes at the end. And this is the White Knight of Dogmatica. The city is invaded by the Despia forces, led by a boy who we should call Albert. He was called Albert, I think, when they first announced it in the in the OCG, which is hilarious. We got a comedy here. We got a Luber's faithful servant at Libidum. 
and of course the new form of the boss man right here dramaturge of despia um so this chapter is gonna go on till so this is gonna be chapter two and it's through 50 so we're done basically with the second chapter Aluber gets center stage literally theater joke ha 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 okay and we're off to chapter three baby so we got one we got two and then three is going to be 51 through 107. All right, so as we mentioned, we are in the capital still. And the priest turns himself into the dramaturge and brings on <clears throat> the nexus here. And Quiritus, which is Fleur's Nix, you are the, the master here, but correct me if I'm wrong. Fleur's armor in the form of a Despia. Best card, branded in red. Luber opening the wings. And another best card, branded opening. The Tri Brigade arrive at the capital to fight this battle against the Despias. Luber turns into his dragon form, Masquerade, making you pay 600 for each effect. And we go back to the desert, where Albaz discovers his own brand, branded in white. And he turns into the branded dragon, Albion. And we love this kit, obviously. The first boss he's going to have to battle as this form is going to be the Sea Serpent. Not the Sea Serpent, but the... I don't remember the, the full TCG name, but the, the Serpent of Golgonda? Or Sea Snake? The Sea Snake of Golgonda? I don't remember. He charges as he screams. Wah! Screams of the Branded. But a mysterious lightning hits the snake in judgment of the branded. Who is responsible, chat, for this lightning? Who is responsible for this lightning? Three mysterious figures appear at the top of the cliff above the spring ends. They are standing there. This card is called Springan's Interluder. Who's this? Who launched this lightning strike? Let me introduce you to the Iris Sword Soul. I'm kind of surprised she didn't get... I mean, she got his Fleur de Lis. She got a QCR, so maybe... Maybe that was it. Guys, you got, a, you got an explanation of the plot of the armor by Nyx. He's the lore master. I'm just the content creator. And twins, the brothers, Theo and Aiden. Clesia approaches the dragon as if to calm him down. He's kind of going crazy, not knowing what's happening. And this creates a special bond between the two figures. The incredible Ecclesia of the desert, the dragon tamer, who is the connection between the sword souls and Albaz. And of course, this sheds off the orange coat and is turning Albi Albion into a shrouded dragon now. And uh, we got a nice little ending of our saga in the desert with Spring Anne's kit riding off on her machine and everybody's happy together celebrating as they right off into the sunset onto a different part of their adventure and the next part of their adventure is going to be in the sword soul summit and we are introduced to the warriors of the sword sword soul tribe taya moye beautiful and of course Longyuan, the traitor who betrays the Sword Soul and the Ice Jades. 
And uh, don't forget the wise beast, Chunjun, who is the chief's personal assistant in, uh, you know, discovering whether people are of good intentions or not. The chief of the tribe, sovereign ruler, Chen Ying. The boy. We also got the general here, Qi Xiao. And they make their way into the summit. I didn't even notice this part of the picture. It was like Fleur, Aiden, and Theo. They make their way and arrive at the Sword Soul Summit. How fun. And immediately, they are called upon the Sovereign. And here, Ecclesia makes the case of why they need the Sword Soul help. Based on what she was told by Fleur. Here we are also introduced to their companions, the Ice Jades, additional dwellers of the summit. I don't know, like, all of their names, to be honest. Like, Ice Jades is probably the, the least popular archetype out of this whole thing. Um, we know, like, Cosmoclore... We know Acti, I think, but I've never actually played. We know Gamir. I never actually played the deck. Should you know? Should be should be nice to do. This is, I believe, Cosmo, I think, and the Kingfisher. I believe this is Kingfisher. Now, they're off to the summit so that they can heal the wounds of Fleur de Lis. They attempted to turn her into a Despia, but she survived. So, this is why they're here with the Ice Jades. They are here to get rid of the curse. And they go down into the mountain where the Ice Jades live. But deep at night, in the cover of darkness, the traitor, Longyuan, opens up the portal in the summit and lets the Despias in. He allows for a Despian invasion of the summit and the Ice Jade's cradle. We have some Ice Jade shenanigans. We can see Longyuan here combining, correct me if I'm wrong, combining the swords of Taya and Moie and turns himself into the sinister Longyuan who is now going to be the antagonist of this story here in the summit, the final battle. We, of course, cut back to the capital and we find our saint, the white relic of Dogmatica. We cut back immediately to the summit here. Sword Soul Strife. We have a battle between Long Yuan and Cheng Ying. Now Long Yuan is trying to usurp. But suddenly there appears at the summit strange form with red wings and horns and a cape it is a luber the dogmatic look at this token man this looks so good this looks so damn good man he chains albion with his with his magic and power he is tied to the floor here meanwhile in the capital we see a flashback, or rather we cut to the trio of Aiden, Theo, and Fleur coming back to the capital to fight off the figure we see in the sky here, who's Dramaturge. But they are, you know, they're, they're trying. They're trying. We have some sort of retribution as Fleur strikes Dramaturge for what he's done to her. But at the end of the day... Dramaturge, Quem, and Quertus' draconic form end up overcoming Fleur here. They capture her in the branded banishment. This is getting scary in the city of Dogmatica here. While at the cradle we are, you know, we can see the destruction of what's happening. While everybody's fighting, at the end of the day, the Ice Jades are the one hurt by this entire story and we had a first glimpse of uh, the next form of albaz as he combined his powers with the ice jades 
The branded sword Mirjade strikes down on Long Yuan a sinister form. The rest is history, as they say. Mirjade, the Ice Blade Dragon, is born. And immediately, something is happening here. We got Albaz on one side. But on the other side, we have another dragon form, Lubelion. They fuse away. While that happens, on top of the summit, there's a there's a battle going on. The Sword Solos are fighting. And this is my personal favorite artwork of the entire lore, by the way. This is a pretty, pretty neat detail. Branded loss. You got the Despias fighting the Sword Soul on top of the summit with Ecclesia trying her best to defend. Fusion has been made. The Abyss Dragon is born out of the branded fusion. While Dramaturge opens up the gates in the summit in Ecclesia, he shows Ecclesia, look, I got your sister. I got Fleur. You need to come back to the capital because I killed her. And uh, the branded fusion is broken. The bodies are expelled from the Albalinidus. And Albus the Ashen is born and is now facing uh, a different battle all the way through the capital. This is the end of this chapter. Chapter 4 is 108-133. And then the final battle is until 177. Which should be, yeah, this one. We go to the land of Iron Baby. We're off to the land of Iron Baby. We're gonna visit the Therion's kit. Is gonna go and try to get some sprite energy to power up the doomsday weapon that she needs to build for the battle with Maximus to take over the capital back again. Kid is working hard. She's on the job here. And we, we need we need some sprite energy here. So Spring and Kit is off to the land of the Disc Coliseum, baby. Again, another card that you might not have noticed that there's just like Sargas and Kit on the art here, which is very cool. So we need to go to the Disc Coliseum and we need to win. Sargas needs to become the champion of the Coliseum here because the king currently ruling this Coliseum is Regulus and we need his blessing. So Kit is hyping up the boy Sargas here. Keep going. You can do it. And the Ardra system is watching above. And, you know, they're realizing they're, they're losing the battle. So they need to send out the sprites from the skies to make sure everything is okay here. Carrot and the Gamma Burst, of course. Now we have some more contenders here. We got, what's her name? The Empress, and we have Irregular, and of course, don't forget, I brought Sprite Elf, Band, and the Gigantic Sprite. Now we go into the battle here for the Sprite Energy. The Sprites and the Therions are added once again. Gigantic Sprite is fighting Regulus, and eventually is defeated Fight the double cross and Kit manages to harness the sprite energy into the machine she has built. There we go. Sprint, you can see Kit right here in the background. Now for the sad part of the story. This, this is going to be... You're going to cry. Your mentor dies. You remember where Dramaturge showed Ecclesia that he's got her sister? Well, she's dead. And as... Ecclesia mourns the death of her spiritual sister, her mentor. She remembers her childhood where she was just a little apprentice and Fleur was her mentor. Sometimes a big sister, sometimes a mentor, a teacher, and she's dead now. The fact that they put Branded the Central Dragomatica and right after that the token, dude, insane. Well done, Konami. Well done. Beautiful stuff. I guess we're going to the dark side. Granginol, the Dusk Dragon, and the Bestials are born. Now check this out. This was interesting to me. This is the order 
of how they introduce Cartesia. Cartesia is essentially the wielder of the bestials here. You thought it was a Louvre, but they put her between the three bestials, which is nuts, right? It's pretty crazy. So we got Magnum Hut. We got Cartesia. Yes, we got Cartesia right here. So Nix, explain to us how Cartesia came to be. Because it's like, people say it's like a corrupt Ecclesia. She's, she's like, you know, she's taken away by the bestials. And now you can see her here, Cartesia and Druzworm, sharing a bond together. The bestials are kings from another world, right? I think they are. And we, of course, got the bald Drake right here. Luber, filled with power, he's ready. He is ready for this battle as the forces outside the capital gather in view, seeing what's happening in Dogmatica, and they are ready for the battle. They see it all the way from Golgonda. Something's happening in the capital. This card is randomly thrown into the story here. Longyuan combined with a serpent to create the mega boss. And of course, the ultimate bestial weapon, the Alba Loss. And in the middle here, you can see Lubelion. One of the most beautiful cards in the set, the bestial Lubelion, ladies and gentlemen. Alubur turns into Lubelion. But deep in the bellows of the capital, Dramaturge is taking a nap. Because he's going to turn into a big-ass monster very, very soon. Wait, I think we crossed over to the other episode, but that's fine. Now check this out, chat. Mercurier is only introduced now. Isn't that crazy? Pretty late in the game. Tri Brigade Showdown, baby. Or maybe this is Standoff. Is this Standoff or Showdown? Regardless, guys, we are in the final boss battle. The Alba Zoa has emerged from the depths of the capital. In the Ice Jade Kingdom, we also have a new boss. And we also are introduced to Gamir, the honestly one of the coolest synchros ever. And we have some, uh, sh some shots here. Now, Sargas fires his rockets. And of course, you can see right here the rockets and the power of Bicephalus absolutely obliterating the Alba loss and Bistia Lubelion just dodging it at the bottom. And here we get the token of the Tri Brigade, which is also pretty cool, pretty late in the story. Look how dark the color of the token is. How beautiful is that? Now we got the three bosses of the end game. We got the champion, Sargas. We have Kit's new creation, Rinbrum. And of course, we have the ultimate weapon of mass destruction, Bicephalus the second, created again by Kit. This is why we had to go to the Land of Iron. These three bosses are going to take down the Bestials and win the battle. We can see right here, we are trying to fire at Lubelion, but Cartesia and Grangnol protect him with his with her body. Corrupted by the mind of a Luber. She's hit. And she falls from the skies. Artesia starts falling. And he knows he's going to lose her. He knows. It's over. And this is where we get another fusion of two characters here. The blazing branded king faces off the final boss of the bestials. The father this potter the ultimate showdown between sanctifier and this potter and don't forget Fleur de Lee and her armor might have gone through a lot of trouble all the way to the world of the dead and back but she's back guys she's back and she is the one returning from the dead to deliver the final blow for some reason, this is a Sword Soul card. 
But this is sword soul punishment inflicted on this batter to win the battle, guys. And not only that, we have a beautiful shot here of Shreg injured, bleeding with his weapon. And in the background, we have this batter. And the battle is now over and won with. The Etude of the Branded. Alubur back to his original form. His faithful servant ad libitum. Kneeling as if saying, Master, I am still at your service. In the desert, we have the form of the sprites. The armor of Lubelion. The energy. The coat. That kit. Capture the energy in. Turning into a new creature that just wanders the desert. The fallen Vargyros. And... His story is not over, by the way. We have post-lore cards blink out. He returns to the Disc Coliseum to try to revive what's left of anything that's happening there. The Ice Jades are trying to get back to a normal life. And our favorite, Quem, wanders the land. Despia and a Dogmatica all at once. She truly unites everything that the story is all about. In a distant land, a fellow lord, a dragon lord, contemplates his next move. He's thinking, I got the crystal. Nix, correct me if I'm wrong, but he won the battle. He got what he was looking for, this red crystal, and he got it. He might have lost the war, but he won the battle. In the Ice Jade Kingdom, a million century ice prison with Long Yuan and the body frozen in ice, maybe to be thought in the future. And Aluber is nowhere to be seen. He leaves his mask on the throne and continues on, you know, to an unknown destination. But at the end of the day, Ecclesia and Albaz fly off into a new chapter, a new story, a new frontier, and maybe, hopefully, we'll see them again sometimes. This is it. This is the story, guys, with the cards. Woo! We we have some some other cards. Now, these these are the the treat for sticking around after the story. We got Ecclesia off into a different world. If you want to know what this world is, it is explained in the artwork. You're going to have to you're going to have to see it in the story. Albaz in the desert. We got Maximus who's getting a QCR and of course Fleur, the two rivals, Shreg, the leader of the tri brigade, the sovereign king of the sword souls. Of course, the ultimate fusion, Mirror Jade. And don't forget Lubelion, who's the other side. The king of the castle of the land of iron, Regulus. The gigantic sprite, the dusk dragon. Of course, the, you know, the, the most powerful bestial, Magnemut. And the leader, Lubelion. Such a beauty. Gamir. And champion Sargas. The moment where everything changed and Albaz was solid enough to save Cartesia. His batter, of course, Sanctifier. Lulu, who saved the day. Our beautiful Quem. New Frontier. And don't forget about the evil duo, Cartesia and our Lord Alubur. Thank you guys so much for hanging out. This has been a pleasure. Uh, I'm really happy to share this with you. If you're not on our Discord, exclamation mark Discord, please join. All of our beautiful discussions about Branded are over there. Um, and if you haven't watched the video of me unboxing it, exclamation mark YouTube, go over, check it out over there. And of course, don't forget the alt art sleeves. If you really want to support me in the channel, that is the best, absolute best way to do that, guys. Um, thank you so much for everybody who gifted subs. Thank you so much for the new subs. I love you all so, so much. I will see you guys in 
the next one. Peace out, guys.